Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So today we are going to try to answer the question on whether or not you can plant old seeds. Now, most of us gardeners, once we get into gardening, get kind of a seed addiction. Get that seed catalog every year from your favorite seed company and you start going through those beautiful pictures and you gotta have them all. Whoa, look at that, yep. We're gonna plant some of these this year. Oh, I gotta get, wait a minute. Yeah, we're gonna get this one. I think we should get eight packets of these. And then suddenly you've spent half a paycheck and you have all these seeds, but you don't have enough room to put them. For example, maybe you want to try four different varieties of tomatoes, but you only have room for 12 plants, but you buy a seed packet for each type of tomato that you wanna grow. You've now planted three seeds from each packet for your total of 12 plants, but each packet comes with 25 seeds probably. So now you got 22 seeds left over from each packet that now you just gotta put away for next year. And that's just tomatoes. You've also done that with 17 other different types of plants. <laughs> and so now you got all these different seed varieties and packets that are left over that are open that are year after year after year and so on and so forth until you have such an abundance of seeds that, you know, should you just throw them away? Or can you plant them in following years and is it even worth saving them? So let's talk about that. So all seeds have three basic seed parts. Endosperm, embryo, seed coat. Seed coat's that harder outer shell that contains all the other stuff inside. The embryo is what basically is part of the seed that gets the plant growing once it's in the right environment. Now stored in that hard seed coat is all the things needed for germination. It stores up energy in there with lipids and carbohydrates and other nutrients that once it gets into that right environment uh, with some water and the right temperatures, it will start converting those carbohydrates and other things into energy, which then makes it sprout. It pushes out a tap root on one side and, and that's normally the first thing that pops out. And then it will start pushing out those little leaves that pop up through the soil that gets you all excited first thing in the spring when your plant sprouts. Behold the seeds I have planted. They have sprouted. Now, over time, that seed coat is gonna get harder and harder as it gets older and older. So it makes it more difficult for the seed to absorb water and kind of get things going. So how can you help that along to make sure that if you've got older seeds, you can plant them and, and still get some plants out of them? So number one, start with quality seed. Make sure that you're buying seed from a company that you know has good germination rates, either from your own personal experience or that you see good customer reviews or it's been recommended by family member or friend. So that, that way you know at least from the first year you're starting off with some good quality seed. Not buying, now if you're buying seed from someone that claims that they're selling you blue strawberries or that cucumelons have red interiors, eh it's probably a good chance you're not gonna be getting any good seed. So make sure that you're getting the good quality seeds from a, from a reputable company to start off. Number two, when you have your old seeds and you're done with them for the season, store them in a cool, dry place. Humidity is gonna be your enemy. So you wanna keep them in an area that's not too humid and not too hot and really not too cold. You don't want them necessarily stored in freezing temperatures. Although there are some seeds and varieties that can benefit from some stratification, which is a whole nother subject altogether. But basically if you're storing them in your house, in like a pantry, in some sort of container, I store mine in these plastic Tupperware bins that have lids on them. And the lid locks down. I keep the seeds in alphabetical order, put them in a cabinet space where it's cool and dark or room temperature and dark and you know, that's good enough. You don't have to get all crazy with your seed storage. Just make sure they're not, you know, in crazy temperatures and stay dry. The third thing to consider is that germination rates will drop over time. Your first year, 
depending on the variety and whatnot, but you should have pretty high germination rates. So say you have a plant that, that uh, the germination rate is like a bean or a tomato or something, the germination rate is 90 to 100%. Well, by the following year, you're probably not gonna have 90 to 100%. You might, but overall, it might be closer to like 80%, say. And then the year after that, maybe it'll drop to 60 or 70%, and then so on and so forth as, as the years pass on by. Now, as seeds get older, that outer coating, that seed coat, is gonna get harder. And what that means is, is that the seed itself is gonna have a hard time having the ability to absorb water so that it can start the germination process. As seeds absorb water, the water then provides the initial thing that, that pumps up the seed to uh, start converting its carbohydrates into sugars, and then those sugars give it the energy to start sprouting. So how can you help that along? Well, there's a couple of different things called scarification. There's chemical scarification, or there's your general manual scarification. This isn't gonna work with all seeds, because some seeds, like some bean seeds, corn, things like that, that have larger seeds, they're easier to work with. But then you got other stuff like, I don't know, lettuce or uh, oregano, that's like the size of dust. It can be a hard time kind of working with it. So take that, you know, as you will, but with some of the larger seeds, say you've got a bunch of lima bean seeds or, or other types of beans, those are ones that you could work with, where you can take a piece of light grit sandpaper, very lightly rub the outer side of each seed. That's gonna kind of put some little abrasive cracks and whatnot in the seed to open it up to let it absorb water and oxygen through that outer shell that has now gotten much harder over time. You can also do chemical scarification, which involves putting a small amount of hydrogen peroxide into water and then soaking those seeds in the water, which that solution will then help soften up that outer shell. So again, it can absorb water and oxygen and, and kind of communicate with the outside world so it can get going. And final step is something called rejuvenation. So we talked about how the, the seed itself is storing, has these energy stores of sugars, carbohydrates and whatnot, but over time they become more depleted. So you can help give them a boost by taking the seeds and soaking them in some water that maybe has some molasses in it, some sugar water. Uh, you can also add some other things like some um, vitamins and minerals to the water like through like a, a kelp solution, uh, or even coconut water has been shown to help the plant, uh, or I should say, should help that should help the seed uh, give them that boost that they need. If if their their stores of energy, their stores of carbohydrates and nutrients are low, you can soak them in these types of solutions. The seed then absorbs those solutions, gives them that sugar boost that they need, just like little kids, and then they go like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, go, go on. So rejuvenation is another option. Okay, so there's four basic things that you can do to help your seed germinate and grow, even if you have seeds that are two, three, four, five years old, sometimes even older. Start off with a good quality seed, store them in a cool, dry place. Humidity is your enemy when it comes to storing seeds. Scarification, whether it be chemical or manual, and, or then the final step could also be rejuvenation, where you soak them in a type of sugar water, mineral water, coconut water. And then also just remember that no matter what you do, germination rates will drop over time. So you're not gonna have 100% in most cases, uh, you know, if they are two, three, four years old or older. Um, and seeds can even last older than that. It all depends on the variety and conditions and all that. And whether you have, uh, you know, if you're working with seeds that are 50 years old or 100 years old, you, you might need a, a lab to help you out with that uh, and a few scientists and stuff. But I hope those tips were helpful. I am actually going to take, because I've got five years worth of seeds here in front of me, and I'm going to take a couple different varieties and plant them and monitor them and see what kind of germination I get and compare the years. 
And so I'll do a follow-up video for that in the near future, so stay tuned. But whatever's going on in your neck of the woods, I hope it's going fantastic for you and that you are having a great day. Go out and play in the dirt, get some seeds sprouted either indoors or outdoors, depending on your location in here in the middle of February. But we will see you again soon. Have a great day. Namaste.